Well, Idaho's lieutenant governor is no longer under a threat of jail time. Yesterday, she turned over a big stack of documents requested by journalists way back in April. It only took a lawsuit, a petition for a contempt of court, and a second order by a judge to get it done. Oh, and it may come at a significant cost to you, the Idaho taxpayers. How much? How about $50,000? But let's first lay out how we got here. Audrey Dutton with the Idaho Capital Sun, one of the plaintiffs in this case, laid this out, out nicely back in June. Back in April, Lieutenant Governor McGeehan announced she was starting a task force to look into the possibility of critical race theory being taught in Idaho classrooms. She called it the Education Task Force, and she would be the co-chair, along with Representative Priscilla Giddings. They're going to hold four meetings that were going to begin in June and go throughout the summer. But the day after that announcement, on April 21st, several reporters from the Capital Sun, Idaho Ed News, and the Idaho Statesman requested completed copies of the online form the Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor was asking people to fill out for these meetings. A public records request. It's a common tool used by journalists to get facts and information. Well, they were wanting a Google spreadsheet with all this information. On May 4th, Jordan Waters, Lieutenant Governor's spokesman, responded to that request saying there were about 3,600 comments and he provided a general breakdown of the data. But Waters also said in fulfilling the records request, they were going to redact all names, emails, and quote, personally identifying information, end quote, at a cost to the media companies that ran anywhere from $560 to $1,540. And everyone wanted to know why. Well, about two weeks later, May 20th, Waters quoted an Idaho code that forbid sharing personal identifying information of a private citizen in their correspondence with an Idaho member of the Idaho legislature. And since Priscilla Giddings, Representative Priscilla Giddings, was on that task force, well, that gave them coverage for not disclosing that information. Then the Idaho Press Club and lawyers got involved, who sent a letter to the lieutenant governor's office saying that exemption, well, it didn't apply in this case. And they demanded unredacted records be turned over by May 27th, to which Waters responded, we are working with the AG office on a response. On June 2nd, Lieutenant Governor's office reiterated they weren't going to provide the spreadsheet, or they would, I should say. They would provide the spreadsheet, but not the contact information. Waters claimed it was outside the scope of the public records request. A day later, Waters sent the spreadsheet, but names, contact information, and the comments were completely blacked out. He also didn't provide an Idaho law that would explain the reasoning for the redaction. A redaction would be a partial denial of the request, and in order to do that, Idaho public records law requires an explanation. Then on July 19th, the press club lawyers, well, they'd had enough, and they filed a lawsuit. A decision came down on August 27th. Ada County 4th District Judge Stephen Hippler ruled in favor of the press club, saying McGeehan's refusal to fulfill the request was a, quote, bad faith violation of the Idaho public records law. He even called a Facebook post of hers about the media request fear mongering and said her reasons to withhold the documents from public view were so baseless and frivolous. Not only should she turn them over immediately, but she's going to pay the press club's legal fees and a $750 fine for the trouble. Lieutenant Governor McGeehan, well, she didn't agree. And on September 15th, she filed a petition asking for relief from judgment, which is basically asking the judge to reconsider and change his ruling. She claimed she should have those exemptions. And also she claimed she didn't get good advice from the Idaho, from Idaho's attorney general. That's Lawrence Wasden, who is basically the state's law firm. But apparently he refused to represent Lieutenant Governor in this lawsuit. Now that's a good part to remember. A full month goes by since the ruling, still no documents released. So the press club attorneys, they filed a petition this week on September 29th, that was Wednesday, against Lieutenant Governor for contempt of court for not turning over the unredacted documents. And in this petition, they ask a judge to detain McGeehan in jail until she does. Well, the next day, yesterday, Lieutenant Governor did finally release the documents after being ordered a second time and facing jail time. So it took nearly six months and legal action for Lieutenant Governor to fulfill a basic public records request. But there's a date in that timeline that we left off, and it has to do with that $50,000 that we mentioned this whole debacle could end up costing Idaho taxpayers. End of August, early September, state agencies have been submitting and started submitting their budget requests for fiscal year 2023. Everything from Boise State to Health and Human Services to the Office of the Treasurer. Well, under the Office of the Lieutenant Governor, 
dated August 31st. On page 8, the lieutenant governor added a one-time supplemental operating expense request for $50,000. She called it professional services. And the reason for it, she writes, is, quote, due to unforeseen legal bills related to a lawsuit from the Idaho Press Club after the attorney general's office failed to properly represent the office of the lieutenant governor. Office of the Lieutenant Governor was forced to find outside counsel following the abrupt termination of counsel and guidance from the Attorney General's office after almost two months. That's the explanation. In the explanation of why this emergency $50,000 is needed, unforeseen legal bills that cannot be covered by the office's current budget. Now, without reducing staff hours and cons uh, constituent services, she says. And if they don't get this money, this $50,000, the request states right here on page, well, let's call it page nine. If they don't get it, they're going to have to devote resources from operating costs or maybe close the office and furlough their only full-time employee. It's worth noting, Lieutenant Governor, the Lieutenant Governor's office has as staff three full-time employees. That'd be Lieutenant Governor, Lieutenant Governor spokesperson, Jordan Waters, as we mentioned. And one of which of those positions is vacant right now. It's the same one that was increased from part-time to full-time this past legislative session. $50,000, an estimate for current and future legal bills, it says. Future legal bills. So will there be more? Well, we reached out to Lieutenant Governor McGeehan to see if she would talk to us about this request. We have yet to receive a response. Although, we do know it should be an interesting JFAC meeting when this does come up.